for a television show. Do we... do we know him? No. <laughs> what kind of a show is it? Wacky. Wacky. That's... that's in Hawaii, isn't it? Oh, that's Honolulu. Oh, I like her. True. <laughs> now, Dino D. Horrendous Productions, in association with the BBC. The station that brought you... Trawler fishing can be fun. All you need to know about pins... <laughs> And hang gliding in a chest of drawers presents... Uh, what's his name? Oh, I don't know. Uh, uh, Kenny. Kenny something. The Kenny something television show. Hello. And welcome to the show. What a great show it's going to be. But before it gets too great to bear, let me show you this. Last time I was in America, I ripped this out of a magazine. I thought... Must show this to the viewers. It's a real advert. A real advert. It's for a dentist in Palm Springs. Look at him. I mean, it reeks of America. Look, tan, lips. Ooh. <laughs> it says here, the mouth enjoys a special and unique status in human anatomy. It's your primary contact for the expression of love and affection. It's a mechanical wonder a barometer of emotions, and a framework for the single most effective form of communication since the beginning of time, the smile. <laughs> At the bottom it says, if you're worried about going under, don't worry, we've got nitrous oxide, <laughs> intravenous sedation, and general anesthesia. The Palm Springs Dental Science Center. Look it up when you go, it's real. What will they think of advertising next, I wonder? Hi, I'm Jeff. I'm a lawyer. Thinking about killing someone? Afraid of the consequences? Well, your troubles are over. Let my record speak for itself. 45 murder cases. 45 acquittals. You know it makes sense. Pull that trigger and give me a call. Excuse me, duty calls. I'm Jeff. Try me. Okay, I'll kiss our puke. And anyone who says punk's dead will be. <laughs> that was the joke. Geezer's buying insurance for his car. Says, I want it covered for theft. Insurance man says, you can't have just theft. It's got to be fire and theft. So the geezer says, leave it out. Who's got to nick a car that's on fire? <laughs> oh, hello. Uh, what seems to be the trouble? It's my shoulder, Doctor. I have terrible pains in my shoulder. Hmm. Well, perhaps a massage would be a good idea. Should we start now? Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, but, Doctor, these aren't my shoulders. That's all right. I'm not a doctor. Oh, yes, 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 Mr. Sides. That's the one, yeah. Yeah, there you are. Peter's like a sign-up, my dear mother. Hello. Oh, my dear, check Oh, this is the wrong... Okay, you can... Thank you very much. That's going to help you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's going to help you, sir. I'm... I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. Helpful hint number 464. Never try to rub a bank while chewing a toffee. <laughs> not bad, not bad, not bad. Not bad. That sketch was not too bad. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was great. Hello. And now it's history of comedy time. As you know, this is the part of the show where we talk about some of the great comics of all time. This week, one of my all-time favorites, Lenny Bennett. <laughs> what do you mean he's not dead? I saw him die in Manchester last week. <laughs> Only kidding, Len. I assure you that was purely personal. Yes, this week we pay homage to the one and only Buster Keaton. Do you realize that people like Buster Keaton were doing things all those years ago that we find difficult today with all our technology and gizmos? They were really fab. Take a look at this clip.
wasn't that great. Of course, there have been people who've tried to copy Keaton, like the late, great Irish comedian, Barney Shamrock. Over to you, Barney. <laughs> Michael, you are the pip. <laughs> Little pip. I know Tarzan's already been done by Miss Derek, or as we call her, B.O. <laughs> but I'm always ready for a remake. Like I always say, if you do it and it's great, why not do it again? And again? <laughs> Love is lovelier the seventh time around. <laughs> anyway, our film is called Tarzan's Last Stand. <laughs> And I'm so glad I'm on it. It's a biggie. <laughs> I play Jane. Surprise, surprise. And Tarzan and I are being chased by a tribe of headhunters. And I'm not ready to give my head to anyone. And Tarzan, who's played by Dudley Moore. Oh, and by the way, he only had a stuntman for the standing scenes. <laughs> Tarzan and I are trapped in our treehouse. And the headhunters have got us surrounded. And Tarzan refuses to come out of the closet. But finally he does. And falls in love with one of the headhunters. <laughs> but I'm giving away the plot. Anyway, go and see it. You'll love it. It's all done in the best possible time. <laughs> hey, hey. Was that, was that Michael Parkinson there? No, it was a cardboard cutter. I know he is, but what's he doing on this show? Nothing. Oh, good. He hasn't changed, then. <laughs> the hymns during the service this morning will be number 37, number 24, number 16, a large portion of fried rice and some soya sauce. <laughs> Now it's guest star time, and this week it's a great singer. I suppose the greatest measure of success in this wonderful world of showbiz is to be known by just one name. Garbo, Brando, Munro, and here's a girl who has achieved that measure of success. That's why she's known simply as Toya. Wilcox. <laughs> Tell me, Miss Wilcox, what exactly is it uh, that you do? Well, I sing. Mm-hmm. And I act. Yes. And I dye my hair. My God. <laughs> How did you do that? Do what? Well, your hair, it keeps changing colour. Oh, really? What colour is it now? Well, it's sort of green, a blue, 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 about red. Ah, oh, well, that means it's Tuesday. <laughs> my God. How did you know that? How embarrassing. <laughs> Sweet, neat. 
darling, since not here. Well, what can I say? I've been doing a little intercontinental flying about of late, and recently, whilst in New York, yes, I was in the Big Apple. Actually, I was definitely Maga's convention, of which I am the founder member. Anyway, I digress. When I was leaving the aforementioned Big Apple, I was about to get on a plane when a stewardess said I couldn't take the dog in a cabin with me. She said, the dog has to go in the old. I said, don't be stupid, darling. You can't put a dog in the old. He'll freeze to death. Well, she wouldn't have it. She said, the dog has to go in the old. So she put it in the old. And of course, I was right. The dog froze to death. But what I thought was interesting was the way she broke the news to me. I was sitting relaxing in my seat, and a stewardess came out and said, would you like a drink, sir? I said, certainly, I'll have a scotch with ice. She said, I'm afraid we're all out of ice, sir. Do you mind if I chip some off your dog? <laughs> <laughs> you must believe me, Geoffrey. I'm, I'm really sorry about all this. You're sorry? Well, how do you think I feel? We've been married now for 12 years, and not once did I ever think there'd be another man. And him. <laughs> all people. What do you mean, me of all people? Why don't you just stay out of this for a minute? Well, it was your idea I came here in the first place. And I think that was right. We should be here, the three of us, face to face, so that you can see what you're breaking up. Well, it's all down to me, then, is it? Well, we have been married for 12 years until you came along. Oh, Geoffrey, I'm so sorry. It must be hell for you. But there's no turning back. The decision has been made. But if it doesn't work out, don't come running back to me. <laughs> We'll make it work. There's a new look at Mac Burgers, cause there ain't no kids around. If you're grown up, come and join us. We've got some by the pound. There's some tasty things to try. If you're looking for a quick one, you can get yours here today. And the wife can have some BK to eat here or take away. If you really like the big ones, come and pick up one or two. They're just waiting on the counter, and we'd love to service you. There's a tidbit at Red Burgers. Oh, not that again. <laughs> All right. Two words. <laughs> First word. Two syllables. First syllable. Four. Four. Second syllable. Yes. Putting lipstick on. No. What's that? Drink. Coffee. Tea. Forty. Right. First word, forty. Second word. Yeah. Mascara. Eyelids. Balls. Lashes. Forty lashes. Oh, I get it. Forty lashes. <laughs> oh, the pain. Oh, the agony. I love this sketch. <laughs> And this is going to be really embarrassing. First time she sang it. She's improved tremendously over the last minutes. Hello, oh, this commercial time. I like it. Style, coverage, good coverage of sport, and it really tells you what's happening in the arts. Oh, um, 
I like its in-depth analysis of the political scene. And above all, it doesn't insult my intelligence. It's a newspaper that understands women. It's a paper that doesn't take sides, but you know, it has its own point of view. I like the humour, I like the reviews, but most of all, for me, it's page three in the tits. <laughs> Creeps, listen to this. There's these two farmers, real thick owls, you know what I mean? Any right that. One says to the other, I've got a cow that I ain't giving no milk. What should I do? The other farmer says, Funny you should say that, cos I had a cow once who wasn't giving any milk, and what I did was to give her some paraffin to drink. So the first farmer goes away, gives his cow paraffin to drink, and comes back the next day and says, Listen, I gave the cow paraffin to drink, and the cow died. The other farmer says, Yeah, so did mine. <laughs> Joe, this plant's got green flies. And they're open. <laughs> oh. Exhausty poo. I bet you don't think, I bet you don't think that I go through a lot of agony to do this show. I bet you think it's like falling off a log. And what do you know about it, sitting there on that comfortable settee with that beautiful girl on your lap? And take your hands off those while I'm talking to you. <laughs> you don't just come in here and do it. We have to spend hours auditioning girls and, and women. Even a girl who does a, a teeny walk-on part has to be examined from every angle. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The agony of looking at naked women all day. I think auditions are stupid. I mean, for instance, I'm not even in next week's show. I failed the audition. <laughs> By the way, if you have trouble following the logic of all this audition shtick, it'll all be explained in the next item. Excuse me. Hello? Hello, are these the auditions? That's right, miss. Uh, you're next. That's right, I'm next. With the piano player, please. Let's call the whole thing off. B flat. And I'll, you say either, I say either, you say neither, I say neither, 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 neither. Let's call the whole thing off. You say potato, I say potato, you say tomato, I say tomato, potato, tomato, tomato, tomato. Let's call the whole thing off. But oh, thank you, thank you. That, that'll be quite enough. Uh, thank you very much, Miss Levine. That's Levine. <laughs> Of Guess the Celebrity. Yes, the game where a guest celebrity appears in silhouette behind that screen, and you at home have to try and guess who it is. <laughs> the clues are there if you look for them. Look at that hump. Look at that mime. Our phones are open now. Let's have your guesses. Yes, you're absolutely right. It's Terry Wogan! <laughs> I'm standing here with Vincent Van Gogh. Now, tell me, Vincent, it must be terrible going through life with only the one year. <laughs> I'm standing here with Vincent Van Gogh. Now, tell me, Vincent, it must be terrible going through life with only the one year. I wouldn't say that. You don't have to. I, I just said it. Did you? I didn't hear you. I've only got one ear, you know. Really? Good Lord, it must be terrible going through life with only the one ear. I don't know. It has its compensations. How do you mean? Well, I got my stereo half price. Oh, you've got one there. No, i got one ear. <laughs>
I did. Yes, you did. She did, didn't she? <laughs> Silly bitch. Juan. <laughs> What's this we're watching? It's the good old days. What? <laughs> yes, here in the Radio Times, in this programme, is the good old days. Let's see that. Ah, it's 1951. Is it? Yeah, that is Radio Times is from 1951. Oh, well, anyway, let's watch it. I like the good old days. Yes, so do I. Come, 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 Don't worry, I will be on soon. <laughs> oh, Michael, it's all right for you. You can play with yourself. <laughs> Personally, I can't stand solitaire. If it's not a four-handed game, I'm just not interested. <laughs> anyway, let me tell you about my new film. I play Florence Nightingale, the nurse. <laughs> and it's called Balaclava Gang Bang. <laughs> I sat during the charge of the light brigade, and I'm with my lamp working my way through the soldiers. I'm in this rather moving scene where there's no bandages left, and I have to use all my clothing. And the first thing you know, I'm standing there, stark naked in the middle of the battlefield, and the guys are going off everywhere, firing in all directions. And suddenly, the Turks come over the hill, charging as they go, and they see me standing there, and I hold up my lamp, and I shout, the first one gets it! <laughs> but I'm telling you the plot, not even if you don't see it, you'll love it. It's all done in the best possible day. <laughs> and now, this. move for you, darling? Well, so-so. Well, let's try again. Okay. <laughs> Initially, the premiership. The House of Lords, that valley of the dinosaurs, and indeed our whole archaic, outmoded, feudal, aristocratic system have no place in a modern society. So this is what we intend to do. Contrary to the vicious right-wing fascist propaganda put about by the media, <laughs> I will not abolish the House of Lords. I'm going to enlarge it, because everybody will become a lord, <laughs> including the ladies, except for Her Majesty the Queen, who will run a hot dog stand in Leicester Square. <laughs> it's a cracker, isn't it? <laughs> Brethren, we would like to welcome to our congregation today a distinguished visitor, the head of the riot here from the BBC. And I would just like to add that I got music, I got Rachel, the my girl who does for anything more. I got daisies in green pastures. I got my girl who does for anything more. Hello, my little silicon chips. It is me, the overwhelming Marcel. <laughs> but do not worry. I am not going to tax your little brains with some brilliant new stories that you need to think about. Just relax, and I will tell you a very old joke. They're so much more easy to digest. You will know it. You will know where to laugh. I will know where to stop. We work as a team. It's better that way, as the actress said to the bishop. <laughs> but that's another story. And come to think of it, it's better than this one. <laughs> Any road up, here is the joke. This fellow was engaged to a beautiful Eskimo girl. Well, she said she was beautiful. Who knows on the whole that fur? Anyway, they were in Alaska, engaged in the igloo, and extremely cold, when suddenly she broke it off. <laughs> Well, that's the end of the show for another week, and what a great show it's been. Let's now take time to look at some of the great bits from tonight's show. And here they are. <laughs> yes, that's what showbiz is all about. The man on the high wire risking his life, 
The clown with his drawers falling down. The magician baffling you with his sleight of hand. People who've spent years learning their craft just to entertain you. And little do they know, they've been totally wasting their time. Because all you really want is Thelma and Ruby, the bouncing boobs. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Which is more than...